So now that we've learned how to identify nouns, uh, verbs, and conjugation words or connectors in a sentence, let's look at uh, detailed mind maps of each of these different types of Arabic words. Because the study of uh, Nahu really revolves around, uh, well mostly, revolves around the study of uh, these three types of Arabic words. Okay, so, as we said, a word, a word in Arabic is called a kalima, yes? And then each kalima is of three types. So, one... Let draw this. Okay. Right, so you have a kelima, Arabic word, divided into three types. One is your ism. Uh, your nouns, your fi'l, your verbs, and your huruf, right? So your harf, your connectors. Each of these uh, three types of Arabic words, kalimat, ism, fi'l, harf, have uh, sub uh, discussions. So the simplest of uh, these three uh, is the harf. Harf has roughly two sub discussions within it. The fi'l has eight sub discussions. And ism has roughly six important discussions relevant to it. Okay. Now you can imagine this, these numbers as six different ways of looking at an ism, eight different ways of looking at a fi'l, and two different ways of looking at uh, a harf. Right, and uh, these numbers uh, sort of encapsulate the extent of the discussion that you'd find in the books of grammar. You have some odd discussions, extra, extra discussions here and there, but these are the core of all discussion that happens uh, on ism, fi'l, and harf in all, pretty much all the mainstream books of Nahu, like al fiya Ibn Malik, uh, Kafi, Ibn Hajib, and uh, so on and so forth. All right, now, out of these uh, discussions, there's two important discussions that are common to all three, okay, all three, and they are to do with the uh, property of inflection that exists in the Arabic language, right, the uh, idea of Arab, right, now, so essentially you have a harf, would have these discussions a fair likewise would have these two discussions too okay so now all of them all of them are looked at from the angle of inflection, right? So you, you need to identify whether your word is mu'arab or mibni, whether it is going to inflect or not, okay? Mu'arab and mibni. That's the first important discussion that is relevant with all three, right? It's common with all three types of Arabic words, right? So you would find uh, that all books of grammar talk about this, uh, whether an ism or uh, whether a fi'l, whether a harf, harf any of these uh, are morab or mabni. That's the first thing you, you look at. The second thing, the, uh, the second common discussion between all three is the idea of whether a word is an amil or ghayru amil. Okay? Amil, i.e. the agent of inflection, i.e. the word, is the word, is this word going to affect the word after it? Is it going to have an effect, inflect, in, inflective effect on the, on, the, on the word next to it or not, right? Whether this will become the source of inflection 
for the word after it, right? So this discussion happens in all three. This, this, this is these are the core discussions, uh, two discussions that happen in both, uh, all, 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 uh, all three types of Arabic words. Now you have extra discussions within uh, fi'l and ism, so you have other ways of you have other. Uh, discussions uh, on fi'l and ism, the important ways of looking at fi'l without which your information or your knowledge of uh, the word will be incomplete and hence the meaning that you're trying to derive from that word in a sentence or in a given uh, context will be deficient. Okay, so if we draw a line here So these are the, let me just uh, do this again. So these two are the common discussions. Okay. Now the fi'l has six more discussions to it. And of course, ism has four more important discussions relevant to it. So let's just stretch this line further down. And in the ism line, we stretch further down to here. Right. So your fi'l has six more sub-discussions to it. So when you look at a fi'l, after the fact that whether the fi'l is ma'arab or mabni and whether it is an amil or ghayr amil, you would look at the zaman or the time frame of the Fi'l, whether the fi'l is past, present, or future, or if it's command verb, uh, so you, that's something that you look at in a fi'l. Then you will look at whether the fi'l is a positive fi'l or a negative fi'l, right? If it's, if, is it insinuating a positive meaning or a negative meaning, i.e. if I say Nasara, he helped, that's a positive verb. You know, if I say he did not help, now it's, that's negation, right? It's negative, so it's a negative verb, he did not uh, help, right? So we look at the, the fi'l from that angle, then we move on to looking at the fi'l from the aspect of its nisbah, i.e. whether the the uh, the the fi'l the fi'l is uh, ma'roof or majhul i.e. whether it's this this fi'l is an active verb or a passive verb right you look at the, the the active form of the verb and the passive form of the verb verb uh, the reason being is that when uh, when a fi'l uh, a verb is active when it's used in the active sense it requires a subject Right, it requires a subject, but when it it is passive, it would not require a subject. Rather, it would convey its meaning in in its full sense, just with the object of the sentence. Right. So nisba, whether the fi'l is mansub, i.e., it is attached uh, or is attributed towards a subject or an object. Right. Nisba, active or passive sense of the verb. After you've looked at the nisba of the fi'l, right. You look at the fact whether the fi'l is muta'addi or lazim, right? Ta'diya. You look at the ta'diya of the fi'l. Now, ta'diya is a property of a fi'l uh, where the fi'l requires whether the uh, whether fi'l requires uh, an object or not. For example, if I say jalasa zaid zad. Uh, sat down. Now, the action of sitting is is just uh, particular to this person's aid, right? The verb sitting does not require any other piece of information. However, if I say daraba uh, zaidun zaid hit, right? The next question would be right. This, this sort of uh, makes the question sprout in our minds. Okay, so if Zed hit, who did he hit, right? So now this fi'l, this type of fi'l requires an object, the person who hit and the person who was hit by this person, right? So that's the that, that's the uh, property of ta'adiyya. Some some uh, verbs do not require uh, any objects, whereas 
some uh, verbs do, right? So you look at the, the fi'l from this angle of ta'adiyya, and once you've looked at that, you have two important discussions which are more the topic of sarf, but we'll just enlist them briefly here and we'll cover them in detail uh, in sarf. And sarf essentially really only uh, mostly focuses itself around these two discussions, okay? So these two discussions are the adad of huruf, adadul huruf, i.e. the number of letters in a fi'l. So if it's a three-lettered verb, whether it's a four-lettered verb, i.e. It, 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 the root letters that exist inside this verb are three, or four, right? So if, if I say daraba, that's dad, ra, ba, three root letters. If I say dahraja, that's da, ha, ra, jim. Dahraja, right? That's a, that's a four root letter verb. Okay? So you look at the verb from its uh, from the perspective of how many huruf it has, slash its bina, right? Its form, what form it takes. For, for example, uh, the word garuma and then akrama. Both have the same, both, both share the same root letters, right? But um, both have a different form, right? Akrama and, and garuma, right? So garuma is to, to be noble, right? And to ak to say akrama is to endow nobility on someone else, right? Or nobility, or, or even uh, it could be used for the meaning of graciousness, being gracious upon someone else, right? Uh, being nice, uh, giving them uh, honor, right? Honoring someone else. So the and in, in fact, if I if I just attach this verb uh, garuma and akrama with these uh, other discussions that we just quickly had. I think it will make more sense. So if I say karuma, it's, the karuma is it's from its uh, uh, time frame, it is a past tense, just like akarama, right? And it's not a present tense, not a future tense. If I say karuma and akarama in terms of its positivity, it's a thubut, right? Uh, whether it's a positive verb or a negative verb, you would say it's a positive verb because it is not la karuma, it's just karuma, right? It's quite easy, this discussion, inshallah. We'll cover this uh, just in a minute. Uh, then, uh, just, just in a, a few minutes, inshallah, right after we're done with this uh, uh, bird's eye view of uh, this mind of inshallah. Then in terms of nisbah, garuma and akrama, both are active verbs, right? They're not passive. They, they require a subject, and akrama would require a uh, an object as well because garuma, in terms of istadiyya, garuma, in terms of istadiyya, it does not require any object. But akrama requires someone that you are endowing your uh, in, endowing, endowing the honor upon, or bestowing the honor upon, or uh, nobility upon, right? So you need a subject and the object, right? So that's a, that's a difference between karuma and akrama, okay? Although they both share the same root letters, just to form the bina, right? Even though they both have the same adad of huruf, but the, because the in terms of the root letters. But because the bina is different, all these diff uh, discussions uh, are affected by it, especially the ta'adiyya of the verb. The last discussion uh, you look at uh, in, uh, in in the sub-discussions of fi'l is the nawr al-huruf, the types of huruf that you have in a fi'l. Okay? So now in fi'l you have uh, some types of uh, fi'l, depending on the types of letters uh, it has, inshallah, we'll cover this more in detail later. Right, so that's your fi'l in a nutshell, right? And moving on to ism, you have four more key discussions with regards to the noun that you're looking at in a sentence, right? So number one, you look at, after you've figured uh, figured out whether an ism is more or mabni or it's an amil or ghayr amil, you would look at the, the ism and try to find out if it is ma'rifa ma'rifa right aw nakira okay ma'rifa aw nakira ma'rifa is something uh, some is the ism that is defined right that is known and nakira is an ism that's just general if I say a book that's just a general book it could be any book but if I say the book now that's specific that's specified that's defined Right, if I say a man, that's a general, it could be any any person from the from the genus of a man. Uh, but if I say Zaid or Umar, 
the person I, I, I know, for example, if, if I know what I'm talking, the person I'm, I have a specific person in my mind named Zayd or Umar, then that person is Ma'rifa. He's known, right? Nakira is general, and Ma'rifa is something that's defined and known. Okay, so you look at a noun, whether if it's a, it's a Ma'rifa or a Nakira. Okay, then the next discussion you have about the uh, ism noun is whether it is mudhakkar <coughs> whether it is mudhakkar or mu'annath okay whether it is it is a masculine word or a feminine word right so if i if i, if I say alim alimun that's a mudhakkar but if i say alimatun that ta added at the end of the word would make it mu'annath right so you look at the word from its Gender, right? If it's a masculine word or a feminine word, then you look at the the ism f from the perspective of its quantity. Whether the word, the word that you're looking at, the ism that you're looking at, is mufrad, i.e., singular, right? Or it is muthanna, i.e., dual, or jamr, jam, i.e., plural, right? For example, if I say kitabun, that's mufrad, that's one singular book. Kitabani, two books, and uh, kutub, right? That's more than two. Uh, now, this this idea of duality is is quite particular with uh, with Arabic. Uh, many languages do not have that, especially English. In fact, English does not have a, a duality in its counting. Um, uh, some languages do, and Arabic is one of them. But in the, these, these are very few languages. Um, but there's a there's a there's a big wisdom behind having this. Uh, Duality, right? Because it, it, it gives quite, it, it allows for precision, precision in speech, uh, inshallah. But that's more to do with balagha, the 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 hikmah, the wisdoms behind many Arabic, the the, the features of the Arabic language. We talked some of it, uh, we talked about some of these things in the introductory introductory or the introduction videos. Uh, but these are the mainly the subject matter of balagha. This that's where the real meanings and the the, the real deep. Um, gems of the Quran are uncovered, right? Then the last thing you look at uh, in an ism is from the perspective of its ishtiqaq, ishtiqaq, ishtiqaq. Okay. Let's just uh, Right, that's it. Okay, so ishtiqaq. Ishtiqaq, it's essentially looking at the ism and trying to know whether this word uh, has root letters and, and whether this, this, this ism can give birth, whether it has been, it, it has, has other words as its root, or whether, if it, whether this word can give birth to other words, right? Now, based on the idea whether a, a word is, is extracted from some other word or, and whether this word can give birth to other words, right? Based on that criteria, you, you, you look at the, the asma, right? And you classify this discussion under the, the topic of ishtiqaq. Now, ishtiqaq is sometimes considered as a completely different subject and uh, it concerns the idea of uh, concerns afal as well to some extent. Now that's uh, that's a separate uh, ilm uh, when it's dealt with in that sense. But some books of sarf, the higher books of sarf, do consider do uh, engage the discussion of istiqaq as well. But in a nutshell, when it talks about asma, we are talking about the a very specific type of istiqaq. We're talking about those specific nouns. We, we, uh, uh, types of specific nouns that uh, have a, their their roots, in other words, or whether they can give birth to other nouns, right? A noun that, that has been begotten by, if I may use that word, uh, if a if a noun has been begotten by another word, or whether it begets another word or not, right? So in a nutshell, that's the entirety of your grammar, right? The entire study of grammar, as far as the, the Arabic words are concerned, Right, uh, it it really focuses itself on these discussions. Right, you have six key discussions in ism, 
in uh, eight key discussions in fi'l, two key discussions in harf, and out of these uh, discussions, two are common to all of them. You would always look at every single type of word. It doesn't matter if it's ism, fi'l, or harf. You would always look at the word and, and ask yourself whether this word is a murab or mabni word, and second, whether this word is an amil or ghayru amil. Okay? Now, once you're done, done with that, the discussion ends sort of for huruf, right? But for ism and fi'l, you have other things to look at, right? For ism, you would look at whether the word is ma'rifa or nakira, whether it's defined or undefined, whether it's a general or a specific word, whether the word is a masculine or a feminine word, whether the word is a, a singular, dual or plural word, and whether the word is a is a, a begotten word or whether it begets, right? In terms of ishtiqaq hierarchy, where does it rank? And for fi'l, after you figure out whether the fi'l is a or a mabni, whether it's amil or ghayr amil, you look at whether the, the verb is madi, mudari or amr, i.e. it's a past, present or future or command verb. You look at whether the, the, the verb, the fi'l, is positive or negative, whether the verb is being attributed towards a subject or an object, i.e. whether it is an active or a passive verb, fi'l. Uh, then you look at whether the verb requires an object to f finish its meaning, otherwise it will be an incomplete word if it does not. Um, then you look at the form and the and the, the, the quantity of letters, uh, the, the quantity of the root letters in the word in, in the in, in the verb, and then you look at the type of letters inside. There's four different classes of uh, types of letters, and we'll cover more of on these last two in, in Sarf inshallah ta'ala in the Sarf 101 videos ta'ala. Right. Now, having finished this uh, key discussion, I would highly recommend that you memorize this chart really well because you're in. This is going to be the strongest foundation you can build for your for your Nahu studies. Right. Any further discussion can be built on on this, inshallah ta'ala. Right. So now that we've talked about this, with regards to uh, the words being murab and mabni and amil and ghayr amil, okay. I'll quickly want to cover these these two because this is the the most important discussion, right? So, for example, if we talk about Morab and Mabni discussion on the words, right? Your Asma. Af'al and Huruf. Okay? Huruf. Your Huruf, all of them, all of them, not a single one is Marab. Every single Harf is Mabni. Okay? These are exclusively Mabni. Right? They do not inflect. They do not change their form. They would always remain as they are, no matter what happens. Okay. Now, af'al are both. Some of them are murab and some of them are mabni, right? Af'al are mostly mabni, okay, and some. Are Marab. Okay. There's three types of verbs in terms of its uh, zaman, in terms of its uh, time frame. So, Madi, the past tense, is exclusively Mabni, always. And the Amr, the command verb, is always Mabni. These two types of verbs are always going to be Mabni. There's only one type of verb, i.e., the Mudarir. That will change form. That will inflect because of uh, uh, oncoming awamil agents of inflection. Okay, only mudarr. So madi is daraba, for example. And then idrib hit daraba he hit and idrib hit someone right hit. It's a command. And then mudarr. Is simple. He hits. He will hit. 
right? And this forms, this, this changes. Yadribu, yadriba, yadrib, right? And so on and so forth. So this is exclusively, Madari is exclusively Ma'arab, and Madi and Amr are exclusively uh, Mabni, okay? So these are exclusively, excuse me, exclusively Mabni, and these are exclusively more, right? So essentially from three types of Af'al, two of them are Mabni, and one of them is Morab, okay? With Asma, on the other hand, with Asma, on the other hand, right, uh, you have Asma, which are mostly, mostly Morab, so it's the opposite of Af'al, right? Asma are mostly Morab and some are Mabni. Now this requires the these two these require more discussion, okay? More discussion, inshallah. We'll jump into this right after this right so with the Mu'arab uh, and Mabni Af'al there's something so it will just uh, label this section with the Fa'al in terms of its being Mu'arab and Mabni so just we can sort of uh, quickly look at what we did over here in a bit more detail with the ta'ala right so Right, so you have af'al in terms of the i'rab, i.e. being ma'rab and mabni. So what we said over there was that af'al are mostly mabni, but there's only one type of uh, fi'al, uh, which is ma'rab. We can rephrase that like so. We can say, we can say that all af'al, literally all af'al, are mabni okay except uh, your fi'l mudara okay fi'l mudara okay so this is important Let's quickly draw this out. So, your fi your fa'al or your fi'l is essentially of three types. Okay, so you have a fa'al of three types. You have fi'l maldi that represents the structure of fi'l maldi represents uh, the past tense. The structure of amr represents the structure uh, that uh, the, the the command verb. And then your fi'l mudari represents the structure of fi'l mudari represent, represents your present and future tense, right? So these two, if I just use a different color, right? These two are exclusively mabni, right? These are exclusively mabni. Always exclusively slash always mebni, okay? Right. Mebni. Your fi'al amr is aslan in its asl is it's mebni. Ala sukun, okay? Mabni ala sukun. This is the terminology used by the grammarians to say that fail amr is mabni ala sukun. That its its state it would, would always end with a sukun. For example, idrib. If I say id 
the rib hit right then the ba is the last ba is sakin right so it is this, this word is mabni right it is mabni it's a steady state word it will not inflect and it's mabni ala sukun it is steady state right it is uninflected always on the state of sukun right the last letter of this verb will always be sukun right so always so sort of memorize this, this this key thing over here right and amr is mabni ala sukun inshallah your fi'l madi on the other hand is mabni Mabni Al al Okay Al al Right Like Daraba Ba You can see how the Last letter of This verb It's a It's fatha Right It's maftuh It has a fatha So this word Daraba This fi'al madi This past tense verb Daraba Will always Have this fatha at the end It will never change Whatever No matter whatever happens Right, no word behind this or this can make this lose this fatha. Okay, let me just highlight this bit over here. If I can do that, let's raise this highlight. It just looks nice. I'm just going to change this highlight to yellow. Okay, right. So, Amr is. Mabni ala sukun and Madi is Mabni ala al fat, right? And with Mudari on the other hand, right? With Mudari on the other hand, this is the verb which is uh, Mu'rab. This is this is the type of word. This is the only type of fi'il that changes its uh, inflected state, right? It changes its state. It becomes it, it inflects. Right, it's more of okay. Now, if I just quickly do bring it here, so take take the example. This is this always more of right. This is always more of, and it is exclusively more of. It's always more of. It is never mabni. Right, exclusively more of. An example to use an example for this. Let's just take the the example that we've been taking daraba with the root word dadra ba. So the root word daraba would give you a fi'l mudari in the form of yald ribu. Okay, yald ribu. Now this state yald ribu yald ribu with the bu the dhamma at the end. Right, that's your marfu state, i.e., has no agent of inflection that's affecting it to lose its lama. However, if I add the word len behind it, len, this word len will cause this verb to have a fatha over it. Okay, len yad riba, len yad riba. You see how the lama has changed to the fatha. And so this form is called the mansub state, the mansub, the mansub state of the verb, right? This verb, fi'l mudari, is marfu. This fi'l mudari is mansub because it has a fatha, because of the word lam. And if I now change the word lam, lam with lam, then the verb yaldribu becomes yaldrib, okay? It will, this word lam would cause it to lose any vowel on, on its last letter, right? So it will become lam yal rib. And this is its madzum state. You would say that this word, this fi'al is madzum. These are the three types of i'rab, right? The three types of <coughs> i'rab specific. To fa'il, all right. A fa'il which is morab will either be morab in its marfu state. It will be morab 
It will be uh, in its mansub state or it will be mu'rab in its madzum state. These are the three types of i'rab specific to af'al, to fi'l, right? The, the marfu' state and the mansub state also appear in the ism, in the asma, but the, the last state madzum is, is, uh, will not appear in the, in the asma, right? Uh, the, the ism is majroor and not madzum. We'll cover this uh, this this term of madzum uh, majroor, inshallah, when we talk about the uh, asma, inshallah ta'ala. But you see how marfu means the fi'l has a dhamma, mansub means it has a fatha, and madzum means it has a sukun on its last letter, right? So that covers the extent of discussion on af'al being mu'rab and mabni, right? Now, let's look at the asma, right? The asma, which are more and mabni. Now, this is a, a lengthier discussion, right? And this is this is a lengthier discussion. And uh, we'll begin by rephrasing everything that we covered in the smaller chart, i.e., over here, right? We'll just rephrase this to make it simpler. Okay. <clears throat> so, with regards to Asma being Mu'rab and Mabni. Right. <clears throat> so, all nouns are either Mu'rab and Mabni in terms of its inflection. Right. The rule to remember here <clears throat> is that all Asma. All asma are mu'rab, right? This is the asl, this is the qa'idah. All asma are mu'rab. And with, as you saw with the, with the fa'al, the qa'idah was different. It was right the opposite. The, all the af'al are mabni, right? The, the qa'idah with the af'al was all af'al are mabni except fi'l mudari. With the ism, on the other hand, all asma <coughs> are mu'rab except except a chosen few, right? A specific few. What are they? Well, it's quite easy, inshallah. So you will draw this out, inshallah ta'ala, in this uh, chart, right? So you, you'll have asma, okay? Let's divide these asma into mu'rab and mabni. Let's say this is mu'rab and this is Mabni, right. Now, there's exactly 20 types of nouns you'll find in Arabic language, right? And we just divide those 20 nouns in Morab and Mabni, right? So we divide this, those 20 between Morab and Mabni, right? So out of those 20, 12 are Morab and 8 are mabni. Right. Just to clarify this, this point of asma being all the asma being encapsulated in this in this number twenty, what we mean by that is you will not come across you will not come across a single ism or noun in the Arabic language except that it will fall somewhere between these twenty classes of asma. Okay, there's no other there's no there's no other noun that exists in the Arabic language that exists that exists outside these twenty types of nouns. Okay. Now this is this is important for you to remember because this is quite uh, quite something that very very few teachers uh, elaborate early on to their students and it becomes a source of confusion for a lot of people, right? So, no matter how far uh, you go in your studies, no matter how advanced you get, you would always, always come across just 20 types of nouns. Your nouns will never go beyond this. Okay? Never beyond this. Right. So, there's eight types of n nouns. There's eight types of nouns, which are mabni, and 12 types of nouns which are mu'rab out of the total classes of asma, right, which are 20. 
Let's start with Mabni first because it's easier to cover. The first type of asma, the nouns that you find in Arabic which are mabni, which will never change their state, are the the dhamair. Alright, dhamair. I.e. your pronouns. He, she, it, they, them. All of these words in Arabic, all of these words in Arabic are mabni. Okay? All of these words in Arabic are mabni. Right? Then you have the asma ishara, right? Asma ishara, the the pointer nouns, right? Uh, this, that, those, these, them, right? These are your isharat dhamair, ism ishara, asma, asma ishara, asma ishara. Okay. Then, after these, you have Al-Asma Mansula 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 Okay, Asma Mansula Your Asma Mansula are your nouns which appear in the form of uh, Connectors of some sort, but they are more to give information about someone. If I say Allahu Ladi, Allah is the one, the word Al Ladi would, would describe this, this phrase in our English, the, the one. Allah is the one. Allahu Ladi, Allah is the one. Khalaqa samawati wal who created the, the heavens and the earth. Allahu Ladi, Allah, Al Ladi is the one. Khalaqa created, right? These types of nouns that, that sort of give information about uh, a noun. Right, these are called asma masula. Right, if, if I say Zaydun, Zayd is Alladhi the one, Daraba Amran, who hit Amr, for example. Right, so these are your asma masula. We'll cover each of these classes with examples in the in, in video number four. This, this is more the subject matter of video number four, inshallah. But this is just to give you all the mind maps of all the important discussions uh, in a brief. Bird's eye view in a nutshell, so that you can memorize them quickly and uh, make them as foundations for uh, future studies. Inshallah, we'll cover most of these uh, pronouns in example with examples used in sentences in video number four. Okay. After asma mausula, you have asma afal. The asma afal. These are your nouns that convey the meaning of a verb, and so sometimes they can be used in 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 place of a fa'al, of fa'al, because they convey the meaning of a fa'al, right? Some people say that, some ulama have said that, some ulama of nah, nahu, they've said that there are some words that are common between asma and af'al. That ta'abir is not correct. The words are in fact asma. A word at the same time can, cannot be an isma and a fa'al. That's, that's, impossi that's impossible. Right, it can't, it can't be a verb or a noun at the same time, but it can be a noun with the meaning of a verb. Right, that's why it's called asma af'al. Right, for example, you must have heard ta'al, come here, ta'al. Right, but ta'al it's a, uh, it's a, it's it's, it's uh, cl classified by by a lot of ulama as, as as a noun. Some classify it as a verb in to to begin with. Right, but you have other other words which are exclusively noun and no one debates on them. For example. Um, balha, right? For example, right? Leave, leave that, right? Balha. It's a noun, but it's used as a verb. Okay. So after this, you have the kinayat. Okay, kinayat. Okay, kinayat. And then I'll quickly, briefly explain this in just a second. So you have kinayat. You have a swat, the, the asma that mimic the sounds of animals and and others, right? So asma aswat, and then you have you have the asma which are murakkab, right? The, these are essentially sentences 
there were actually sentences or phrases that became words, that became singular nouns. For example, the word Abdullah, is, it's actually a, a phrase, right? It means the servant of Allah, but now Abdullah has become a name, right? So you have, you have a smart like this, like these, that become uh, mabni, right? They become, these sentences, phrases become one word, and they're used as uh, one singular, singular noun, as a name of a person, for example, and it's mabni, right, murakab. And the last one, right, is dhuruf, the asma, the nouns that give the information of a place uh, or a time, right, or they're used to convey information about time and place, right. For example, if I say, uh, right, min qablu wa min ba'd, right, or if I say, if I say, if I say, let's let's take for example, لقد كنت مرجوا قبل هذا قبل هذا. This قبله, before this, before this, after this, on top of things, right, below things, uh, on the right, on the left, right, or in the past, in the future. These types of asma, which are specific to giving conveying information about the time and, and, and place of things, these are the roof. And all of these eight classes of, of uh, words, first of all, will be covered in detail in the in video number four. Um, but all of these are mebni. They will never change, <clears throat> they, do, they do not change their case ending. They do not change their case ending because of any agent of infection coming on top of them. Okay? For example, if I say, جَاءَ هَؤُلَاءِ رَأَيْتُ هَؤُلَاءِ مَرَرْتُ بِهَؤُلَاءِ هَؤُلَاءِ is a, is, a, is a pronoun, right? These, okay? It's a pronoun. But if I replace the word جَاءَ رَأَيْتُ and مَرَرْتُ be, for example, with the word هَؤُلَاءِ you see how هَؤُلَاءِ stays as it is. But if I change the word هَؤُلَاءِ to رَجُل جَاءَ رَجُل a man came جَاءَ رَجُلٌ رَأَيْتُ رَجُلًا and then مَرَرْتُ B I I went past مَرَرْتُ B رَجُ لِن رَجُ لِن You see how the un, an, and in, right? The, the, the word رَجُ changes its infection, but هَؤُلَا it does not, right? So these are these words are always and exclusively مَبْنِي Okay? Let's talk about the مُعْرَبْس the مُعْرَبْ the words, right? There's 12 classes of مُعْرَبْ words Number one, you have a word which is mufrad, sahih. Right. So before before we move on, I, I I forgot to mention what kinayat means. Kinayat are the are the words that uh, point uh, towards things which are not specific. They are vague. Uh, for example, if I say if I say I if instead of saying I when I did I I just said faaltu uh, kada I did that without specifying what I did. If I say akeltu. Uh, Right, faaltu, faaltu hakada. As opposed to saying akeltu atta'am, I ate food. Right, you just say faaltu kada. I did that, or I I did like that. Right. So these are kinayat. Right, it's uh, it's to convey a meaning without being specific. Inshallah, we'll use this more in uh, exa examples in video four, bidden ta'ala. Right. <coughs> So we can get back on track with the Mu'arabat. So the first type is Mufrad Sahih. This is a word which is singular and it is Sahih, right? The word Sahih here 
means that the word it's, uh, it does not have a harf illa. It does not have alif, waw, or ya at the end. It does not have a hamza at the end. Right? And neither it uh, has the same letter repeat twice at the end. Right? That's, that, that's, that word is a, is a mufrat sahih. Likewise, you have a word which is mufrat. Right? But it's not sahih. It does have a harf illa in it towards the end, or it does have a hamza, for example, at the end of it. But, but it is muf- it is qaim it is qaimun ma qama sahih. It is qaim ma qam sahih. It is equivalent qaim qam equivalent to sahih. Right? It is no different than sahih. Okay. For example, the word rajulun, rajulun uh, would be mufrad sahih, and the word dalun would be mufrad qaim maqam sahih. It's not sahih because it has a wow in it, but it's still equivalent or uh, similar or it's the same in terms of its being arab uh, as mufrad. Okay. Now rajulun, as you can see, ra, jim, lam does not have a wow alif ya, does not have a uh, hamza, and it does not have. Uh, the last letter lam or jim repeat itself, right? That's that's why it's called mufrat. It is singular and it's sahih. It does not have any, have any of those properties. But the word dalwun, it is mufrat. It, it points towards one bucket. Dalwun bucket mufrat one. Qaim muqam sahih. So it's not sahih because it has wow in it. But in terms of its type of arab, in terms of its inflection. Uh, will be equivalent to sahih. Some ulama, some ulama, take uh, merge these two and uh, just mention qaim qam sahih as a part of mufrad sahih, right? But these are two types of uh, different words because of the, the type of the differences in the types of letters used in them, right? So uh, some ulama have separated them out. The author of kafiyah does not. The author of hidayat al does, for example, right? Then you have the word which is jam. It is mudakkar, it's a masculine word. Right? And it is mukassar. In fact, let's, because uh, sometimes the word can be a non human, so let's remove this word mukassar, uh, mudakkar. It is, a word is jam, mukassar. Mukassar and it is Munsarif, right? Okay. Now, a word which is in the plural and the form that it uses to convey the meaning of plurality, right? It is broken. It is broken, right? And it is Munsarif, i.e., it takes on a complete form of Arab. There's, there's a form of ism which does not, so that's why they, they, they call it monsarif here, right? Jama' mugassar, monsarif, a word which is plural, it is broken, and monsarif, i.e., it takes on a complete arab, right? We'll contrast this word monsarif with ghair monsarif, right, in just a few seconds, inshallah. So, to give you an example of jama' mugassar, monsarif, say the word, take, take the word. Uh, Muslim, for example, Muslim. The plural for this is Muslimun. Mus- <coughs> Muslimun, right? Muslimun. But the word, that this this word, you see how the meme seen seen lam meme, and the meme at the beginning, right? They have not changed their places, right? Meme seen lam meme. They still appear. In the same order, the only thing that's changed is this wow noon at the end, that conveys the meaning of plurality. However, if I use the word rajul, a man, this will not become rajulun. That'll be wrong, right? This becomes rijal. Now you see how the order ra jim lam is broken by this alif in the middle, right? This alif in the middle. So these types of nouns are called jam, jam mukassar. Okay, jam mukassar. 
This first bit is Jam Salim and this is Jam Mukassa. Right? Inshallah. Let me quickly erase this. Right. After Jam Mukassar Munsarif, you have Jam Mu'annas. Jam Mu'annas Salim. Salim, okay? Salim. Now, this is your, let us see the word Muslim. Muslim. It's it's jama, it's plural in the feminine case would be Muslim at Alif Ta at the end, right? That's why it's Salim, not Mukassar, okay? It is Salim, not Mukassar, because the the meme seen Lam and Meme, they have not the, that that first form has not been broken. Only Alif and Ta has been added on to it. Right, so because it does not change its uh, uh, its place places its structure, the structure is not broken. It stays the same. It's called salim and not mukassar. Right, so this type of jama muannath salim is uh, also marab, for example. Okay. Then after jama muannath salim. You have, of course, the Jam Muzakkar Salim. Like the word Muslimun. Muslimun, right? Muslimun is Jam Muzakkar. And this was Muslimat. The Muslim, Muslim is both the same in both of the words. The Alif Ta at the end signifies a feminine plural, and the Wawnun signifies a masculine plural, right? Now that we've talked about the three types of jam'ah, let's talk about the duo, right? The 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 muthanna, right? The muthanna, right? Muthanna, the the dathniya, the the duality of the the words which are in the duo, like kitabani, kitaban, musliman, right? Aliman. The alif noon at the end signifies your Dual words, okay. So these types of words are dual, right? Within them. So these types of these are your essentially these are your mufrit words, i.e. singular words, one and two. These are your jama words, and this is muthanna. Muthanna, i.e. the tithniya. I hope that's uh, so far it's clear, inshallah. If any if anywhere you get stuck, inshallah, you can always reach out to us uh, on the on the chat. On the forum, Bidinla Ta'ala, and uh, the teacher will be more than happy to help you uh, understand these better, right? This is your singular words, singular, single words. These are your plural words. And this is your dual words, okay? So you have Mufrad Zahi, Mufrad Qaim Qaim Zahi. You have Jam'a Mukassar Munsarif, you have Jam'a Mu'annath Salim, Jam'a Mudhakkar Salim, and then you have the duo Muthanna, right? Sometimes it's called the Tathniya as well, right? Tathniya. Let's change the color of this. It's called Tathniya. Alright, Tathniya. Shout out. Alright. Now, that's the first six in based on their on their uh, on the quantity of uh, subject uh, subjects that the word represents, right? And then the other six are somewhat uh, disjoint from this. So we'll begin with them, right? So it made sense to sort of separate the two types of lists. Right? The first six are the words which are based on their quantity and the types of letters found in them, right? And based on their structure, change, stru structural changes. The, 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 the next six are somewhat different. Okay, so the next ism, which is Mu'arab, or the, seventh, the second, uh, the, the seventh class of as, uh, Asma from the Mu'arab side, 
is the word which is غير منصرف which is غير منصرف now, that, now con contrast this with the word منصرف right منصرف so all of these مفرد صحيح is a منصرف word it's a complete منصرف مفرد قائم قام صحيح is also منصرف and جمع مكسر is of course منصرف as we've mentioned over here right now when we add this label of a munsrif to a word it means that it's going to have a an on and in sound it's going to have a tanween and it's going to have a complete on an in like it's going to have a dhamma fatha and kasra added to it right these ones over here the last three they uh, are not classified as munsrif or munsrif because they're arab is given by waws and alifs not the the harakat now this this is a higher concept, inshallah, we'll, you, you will uh, cover more of this in, in your later studies of Nahu. This is, will be too advanced to cover in this series. Right. Ghair Munsarif is a word which cannot have a tanween or a kasra. Simple as. Right. For example, Umar. The word Umar, anytime you re read a hadith, right, from books of hadith, right, and it comes, it says, An Umar, An Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala an. An Umar, right, Umaru. Umara and Umara. If I, if, I, if I contrast this with the example of if I say Ja'a Rajulun Rajulin Rajulan. Right? Ja'a Rajulun in the, as a subject. Maratu bi Rajulin as an object. And then Rajulan Ra'aitu Rajulan. I saw a man as an object, right? If I replace this, the, each of these case endings, the word Umar, which is غير منصرف, will not have ex the exact uh, changes, right? So first of all, it will not have a tanween. Rajulun, how I, you can see how it has a tanween un sound at the end. Umar would just be Umaru. Ja'a Umaru, Umar came. It will not have a tanween, so it will be Umara. And it cannot have a kasra, so it will be Umara. And then the mansub state, you have Raju. Sorry, uh, my bad. Umar, Umara, right? Umara and Umara. The word Umar, because it is غير منصرف, it will not have a tanween un sound, and it will not have a kasra, right? So this is this is what is missing. It does not have a tanween, and it does not have a kasra, right? A word that cannot have a kasra and a tanween, right? It is the word that word is a غير مصرف when it can have other harakat at the end as the case endings inshallah okay there's uh, quite a bit of detail to uh, this discussion of غير مصرف but that is beyond the scope of this discussion this is just to give you the foundation so you memorize these charts memorize uh, these, these lists of types of nouns and words memorize them well understand what they are in a, in a brief brief uh, sense and then you, as you study more books on Nahu, and uh, you will in the next uh, segment of this course, uh, you will study the classic called uh, Ajrumiya. Uh, it's, it's quite famous with the uh, with people who are connected with the ulama. Uh, more, more of these things will come, inshallah, in those in those manuals, in those treatises. But for now, it's just let's keep it brief. Right. So after Ghair Munsarif, after Ghair Munsarif. You have a type of word It's, it's, a, it's actually a, a group of Six letters, six words, right? Sitta, asma sitta, six nouns By What we mean by these six specific nouns are These Abuka So abun, abu Abuka Khuka Okay Hanuka, Hamuka, Fuka, and then Zu, Zu, Malin. Right. So the word Abu, Ahu, Hanu, Hamu, Fu, Aifam, and then Zu. These six nouns are 
are always uh, when, when used in this form for example the word on its own abun akhun hanun hamun famun these words these 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 words on their own without being attached or attributed towards some something your father your brother for example without without this possessiveness the word on its own is just mufrad sahih munsurif abun aban abin right on their own these words will make mufrad munsurif sahih or mufrad sahih munsurif right but when they are attached to or they are they are attributed towards something so if, let's say this word abuka your father abuka right i hada abuka this is your father abuka ra'aytu abaka i saw your father right and then maratu bi abika i went past your father uh, abuhu his father abuha her father abuki your father in the feminine right so these words although in the asl uh, on their uh, on their own are mufrad sahih munsurif but when they are attached towards a a dhamir or or an other other noun they attribute towards another noun when they form this relationship father of brother of right when they when they when they form this relationship with other nouns they are classified as asma sitta and there's exactly six these are the only six nouns that are uh, that do this okay so it's important to know the structure so that we can complete the list of these 20 high classes of asma inshallah ta'ala right so these are specific set of six nouns that form this class right after asma sitta we're only short of four more examples then you have the asma which are maqsura asma right let's keep it simple let's just call it ism maqsur right any word that is ism maqsur and likewise you have ism manqus let's use these do this together ism manqus okay manqus now ism maqsur is a word which has a alif at the end or alif uh, alif maqsura uh, and alif mamduda like a madda alif madda at the end right take examples of these you have musa 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 isa all of these names will have this little alif at the end, right? This is, is called alif maqsura. So this is a specific type of alif, uh, ism, uh, called ism maqsur because it has an alif maqsura at the end, or alif mamduda would also uh, become part of this. Although uh, some classify alif mamduda as ghair mansurif, okay? So for, for example, hamra, hamra, u. Right. If you remove this, that's is hamra, okay. But essentially, you understand any word that has alif maqsura at the end, it's called ism maqsur, okay? Ism maqsur. Any word, let's keep it simple, inshallah. So any word that has a, this this little thing at the end, this ya, and little alif on top, alif maqsura, it's just a short alif, right? That ism would be ism maqsur. Contrast this with ism manqus. Ism al is a word that has a alif, waw, or ya at the end. No, uh, sorry, not no alif, waw, and ya. Right? For example, qadi, a judge. Qadi, right? The word on its, in its asal was qadiyun, but Arabs do not use that, right? They drop this alif, this, sorry, this, uh, this not ya, alif, ya. They drop this ya at the end, okay? So this becomes qadin. Qadin. Okay, and because this ya is hidden, because this ya is hidden, so you, you can contrast this with uh, the the word sahih we used, right? So this word is a manqus and is a maqsur both are not sahih because they have alif and waw and ya at the end, okay? So qadin, you can see how the ya is dropped, okay? So if this word technically cannot have a 
on right and it cannot have uh, essentially a, 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 a it can have tanween right so yes so it can have tanween but it cannot have this this dhamma okay because the ya is dropped in that case so the three the three cases of the word qadin contrasted with the word ism maqsur for example we have musa ja'a musa ra'aytu musa and marartu bi musa this is this is ism maqsur by the way right so contrast this with with ism manqus right hadha qadin ra'aytu qadiyan right so in this mansub state with the fatha on top the ya comes back and the tanween and all of that comes back and then the maratu bi qadin the ya goes away again okay So you see how this operates. That's that's the difference between the difference between ism maqsur and ism maqus. Ism maqsur will not have a tanween. It will not have a kasra or dhamma or fatha. The arab is is hidden, right? Those, those harakat are they, they call them uh, muqaddar. They, these these are hidden, right? They, these will not show on the word, right? In the in the case of ism maqus, you you have a case of the ya coming back and this 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 uh, tanween on top coming back, but normally. The ya is just omitted, right? So the arab of the last letter is not is can, cannot be known in these two cases, the first and the last. But with the case of qadiyan, uh, you can, because the ya comes back, and so that that haraka that that the tanween that you see at the end is the asl tanween. That's the the last haraka of the last letter. That's arab. But here, because the ya, the last letter is omitted, you cannot know the the case ending of this letter because the the case ending is is exclusively specifically. Uh, concerned with the last letter, but when the last letter it gets omitted or it, it is hidden, uh, you can not know the case ending of a letter. So in these, in this case as well, we say the the case ending, the arab of these two forms of ism manqus is also muqaddar. Okay, so your arab, your your inflection can be uh, visible, as is the case with all these asma up till number eight, and then these last. Four, the 9, 10, and the 11 and 12 that come after this, these asma, the arab of these are is 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 either completely hidden, the case endings are completely hidden, or they are partially hidden, as is the case with Ism Maqsur. Ism Maqsur is completely hidden, right? The word Musa does not change its form, but the word Ism Manqus it does. Right? So if, if a question appears in your uh, appears in your mind, right, so what's the difference between the difference between Musa, Musa, Musa? Because it does not change its case ending and and all of these mabniyat all these words which are mabni they don't change the case ending either and this doesn't change its case ending either so what's the difference why do we add ism maqsur here and not here now that would be a very good question okay and the answer would be it's not that the word itself the musa itself uh, cannot have a tanween on it right in its asl the word is used like so, so, so it's used like so. But the real reason is there's this there's there, there's a there's a, there's a there's a secret kind of inflection, right? There's a there's an inflection happening that does not happen here. Okay? There's a there's a there is a type of inflection that happens here that does not happen here, which is why the ulama of Nahu classifies the maqsur in Ma'rab Asma, not the Mabni. Asma, okay. So this 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 kind what the the, the the specific type of inflection that's happening here is more the matter of sarf. But I'll quickly mention this. Essentially, when you have look at the word uh, qala. I'm going to bring it over here because of the lack of space. Qala. He said, right? But the word in its originality, in it, in its original form, was not qala. It was qawala. Qawa la. But because the wow is a harf illa, it is from the three huruf of illa, alif, wow, and ya. When you have a wow with a fatha, and the letter behind this has a fatha as well, you change this wow into an alif. So this wow gets changed to an alif. This is a, an internal inflection. This is what's happening over here, Musa. Because the ya has a haraka, right? So let's, let's contrast this with this. So if I say Musa 
was originally Musa Yun. Musa Yun. Now see the Ya has Harakah on top and the, the letter behind has a Fatha. Now that Fatha on the scene causes the Ya to turn into an Aleph. Okay? That's essentially what, what has happened. Right? Musa Yu has changed to give you this case. Musa Yu. Ah, oh, yes. So it was not Musa Yun, it was Musa Yu. Just, just one. Right? Musa, Musa Yu. Right? So Musa Yu becomes Musa. The Ya just changes uh, its form and becomes an Aleph. So you have Musa as opposed to Musa Yu. Right? So there's, there's, there's a secret. This is the idea of a secret inflection. Like the, in, uh, an, uh, there's like a secret, like, like underground kind of activity that's happening that's causing this ism to have this steady state. Right? It doesn't show its uh, Arab, this ism maqsur, but in, in fact it, it does have that. Okay? So that's the difference why ism maqsur is added here, not over there on that list. Okay? Right, ism maqsur. The last two. The last two are uh, any any ism from Mufrad Sahih Munsarif, Mufrad Qaim uh, Qam Sahih Munsarif, and Jam'a Mukassar Munsarif, for example. Uh, any of these nouns, right? Even Ghair Munsarif, for example, right? And Asma uh, Sitta, right? And Maqsur, any of these different nouns, apart from the first, last two, Right, the, the, the last, uh, last four, uh, last three, sorry, last three. Uh, in fact, I would say the last, just last two. In, just it, apart from the last two, all of these other eight uh, types of asma, when they are mudaf, attributed towards the the, the letter ya my, the letter ya ai my, right. In that case, the the Arab does not show, right. So. Although it's not a specifically different type of noun, but because it, it's, it's, its use case is limited, so the form of, uh, of the noun is, is given a specific, uh, a separate class, right? A noun from any of these eight, uh, which is mudaf towards ila, towards ya, my, mutakallim, the person who speaks my, right? The person I, uh, who is uh, giving information. The, the example of that would be kitabi, kita, kitabi, kitabun. Gets to kita b. You see how the word was kita bun. Now the ba loses its own an in any haraka and turns into a, a kasra because of the ya after it. Kita b. Right. Uh, Delwi my bucket. Rijali my men. Right. And muslimati my muslim woman. Muslimati. Right. غير مصرف عمري my عمر محمدي my محمد for example right اسم منصور موسي موسي right موسى موسى yes we say would be uh, yes موسى موس موسى and then it's a اسم منقوص right قاضي my judge Qadi, right? Qadi, okay. So, this is a this this in a nutshell is essentially where you uh, where you have any word from these eight classes when it's attributed towards ya of mutakallim, the person who speaks who's giving information, it causes the word to lose its case ending, and it would always have a kasra, okay? Always have a kasra. طيب. And the last case scenario is of these last two, Jama Mudakkar Salim and Muthanna, um, but more specifically uh, towards the Jama Mudakkar Salim, right? When you Jama Mudakkar Salim, Jama Mudakkar Salim, Mudaf. Again, mudaf ila ya, right? Again, ya. So muslimuna would become muslimiya. The word muslimuna, right? Let me just bring over here. The word muslimuna 
مسلمون مسلمز مائی مسلمز مسلمیہ یو سی ہاؤ دا الف دا واو نون کمپلیٹلی گون رائٹ کمپلیٹلی گون وین یو چینج دا ورڈ ایٹریبیوٹ دا ورڈ مسلمون ٹو می مائی مسلمز مائی مسلمز مائی مسلم برادرز فار ایگزامپل مسلمیہ رائٹ اینی وے سو اسینشلی ان نٹ شو Because we're talking about the the Arab and Mubni, the bina of Asma, Mu'arab and Mubni Asma. You've seen in a nutshell that from the twenty classes of Asma, eight are Mubni and twelve are Mu'arab, right? So you'd memorize these list of names. So if if someone says to you, okay, what 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 is this Ism? You'd say, well, it is Mubni. Why is it Mubni? Well, because it doesn't change its form. Okay, so how many Mubniyat are there? Well, there's exactly eight types of Mubni Asma. What are they? Well, Dhamair, Asma Ishara, Asma Al Masula, Asma Fal Kinayat, Aswad Murakib, Zuroof, like that, right? That's how you memorize these things, right? Okay, so how many Dhamair are there? X one, so then the question follows. How many Asma Ishara are there? What are they? X one, Z. Okay, so eight of these. And then twelve of these, right? So you have two which are single, uh, which represent those nouns which are singular, mufrid, which are sahih, and those which are qaim qaim sahih, which are just like sahih, right? And they are munsrif; they show complete Arab on an in sound, the kasra and the tanmin. Then you have three cases of plural, plural words: jama' mukassar munsrif, jama' muhannas salim, jama' mudakkar salim, right? The word, the jama' which is broken, doesn't matter if it if it's It was one of the muzakkar in its, in its uh, original form. It's just broken, so it's it's munsarif. It, it gives you a complete uh, arab, right? It gives you a tanween and a kasra. Then you have uh, jamal al salim. Of course, the the word Muslim becomes muslimat, so it's a plural for for the feminine feminine uh, for the feminine words. And then jamal muzakkar salim is the plural for the masculine words. And because it's salim, it's not mukassar. Uh, because the, the structure of the singular single word it does not break to form the plural just you just add uh, suffixes to give the meaning of a plural word then you have the words which are dual muthanna slash uh, tithnia and you just add alif noon at the end and you get that tithnia okay then you have ghair musrif a word which is essentially uh, it, it is morab But it does not; it cannot have an al, uh, a tanween or a kasra on it. Okay, so it's that in that, in that case, it is not munsarif; it is ghair munsarif, right? So that's the contrast. Then you have asma sita, the the six specific names we mentioned. We talked about them. Then you have ism maqsur, which is, uh, and then you have ism qus. Ism maqsur and ism qus are contrasted uh, with the word sahih. Okay, sahih. These have alif. At the end, which is harf uh, illa, and ism nukus has uh, a wa or ya at the end, so and uh, the, those two are harf illa as well, right? So, so you, these two are contrasted with the two sahih forms of mufrid, okay? Because they have harf illa at the end, and these do not. Then you have any of these eight types of nouns being attributed or being mudaf towards ya mudakalim, and then you have jama mudakir salim being uh, attributed towards the ya, right? So these are essentially your your asma, twenty asma, classes of asma, broken into morab and mabni. Okay, so just to round this section up, I'll quickly mention this: that your arab is of as as you remember from uh, video number two, your. Uh, Your, your Arab is of three types, okay? Your Arab is of three types, yes? You have in Arab Asma, as we, as, as we said, the Arab of Af'al was Murfu, Mansub, and Madzum, right? The Arab of Asma is again of three types, okay? But The only difference is that where the af'al and asma both can be marfu, i.e., they can have a dhamma state, and they can they can be mansub, i.e., they can have a fatha slash uh, an alif state, for example, a wow state, and then you have a majroor, right? So these two marfu and mansub, 
okay these marfu and mansub state these are the they are shared between asma and afal and this majrur state is 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 a uh, is specific right it is specific to asma okay asma chop right so that in a nutshell is the entire discussion on asma and af'al the i'rab and bina the murab and mabni asma af'al and huruf okay so just recap all your huruf are mabni they are all mabni in af'al out, out of the three types of fi'l two are mabni and only one type is murab and in asma most are murab and some are mabni and we talked about this in af'al you have three types of three types of uh, af'al two are mabni one is murab and asma there's there's 20 types of asma eight are mabni and 12 are murab inshallah ta'ala right so now that we've concluded with this idea of murab and mabni let's go back quickly and look at this this uh, original chart right so we are done with this first discussion about murab and mabni okay right now let's talk about the the idea of which of the asma of al and huruf are amil and which are ghair amil this discussion is quite brief it can be summarized in literally a few sentences okay so amil and ghair amil okay okay so So you have asma. Let's just keep a singular. You have ism. You have fa'ls. So we're looking at all of these three types of kalimat in terms of its amal and harp. Okay. So with your, in terms of your. Uh, Fi'l, all of your af'al, all of your af'al are amila, right, exclusively. Okay, amila. They act as the agent of inflections, okay? Every single fi'l will act as an agent of inflection, right? It is an amil, okay? It is an amil. Okay, it's an amil. With your asma, all asma, all, all isms, all asma are are ma'mul okay they are ma'mul right they are acted upon they are the objects of inflection not the agents of inflection except 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 those nouns, those asma, which take on the meaning of a fi'l, okay? Which take on the meaning of it, or which resemble, resemble a fi'l, okay? That's it, simple. All your af'al are amil, they act, right? They, they act, on other words. All your asma are ma'mul, 
Okay, except those which resemble a fi'l. And huruf are two types. You have huruf which act as agents of inflection, or amila, and then you have huruf which are ghayr amila. Okay, they do not act on any word. Okay, so well, this, this discussion on uh, hur, uh, the amal of harf it requires a bit of discussion, so we'll come, come to this inshallah in, in a second. But just to sort of recap this, in terms of, of your asma, because asma, uh, they, they become the, they are the subject of the sentence, right? Or the object of the sentence, right? It makes sense that you have other agents of inflection that act upon this ism to convey the meaning of being a subject or an object in a sentence, okay? Hence, you asma, they operate as ma'mul, i.e. They, are, they serve as the object of, in, of inflection, right? As opposed to the agent of inflection, being, being, as opposed to being the agent of inflection, okay? Except those asma which resemble a fi'l in their meaning, okay? Which have the meaning of a, of a fi'l. Like, we, for example, we talked about the, the concept of Asma af'al, those, those asma that have the meaning of a fi'al, right? So on and uh, so forth, right? So, simply speaking, all asma essentially are ma'mul. That's the, that's the general rule, right? Except those uh, asma which uh, resemble a fi'al or uh, uh, give the meaning of a fi'al, for example, right? Then all the af'al are amila. All your af'al are amila. Right, they act as agents of inflection. Okay, a noun would never act as an agent of inflection unless it has a meaning of a fi'l. But a fi'l would always act as an agent of inflection. It would always require a doer of that verb. And sometimes, as we said, if it if it's a fi'l which has ta'diya, which requires an object to complete its meaning, then it would require an object as well. Right, so it, a fi'l would always be an amila. Right, it would always be an amil. Right? Let me uh, correct this. Yeah, so it's just because talking about a single fi'l, we just call it amil. Okay, no, amil, amil, it would be af'al amila, but fi'l amil. Right? So a fi'l would always be an amil, it would always be an agent of inflection. Always. Right? Now, sometimes some huruf act on the, the fi'l, which, uh, for example, change it, uh, change its form. But that, that, that inflection is not to do with the, the, the subject, verb, and object uh, placing of the, of, the, of the words. That inflection is, is, it can be classified as a more, of a, a more of an internal inflection, right? And that's why you can, for, for example, even uh, see why the ulama of sarf have paid more attention to that than the ulama of nahu. Right? As far as nahu is concerned, the af'al are essentially amila, and they are not ma'mul. But if we combine this with the knowledge of sarf, some, the fi'l mudari' Right, fi'l mudari' fi'l mudari' i.e. like for example the word yadrib again right, yadribu now these types of, these fi'l mudari' this can become a ma'mul too from the, from the perspective of its internal inflection, okay I.e., the, the, the inflection that, 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 that's happening over here, it doesn't really uh, affect the subject verb order relation of the words. It just changes the, the, the meaning of the word, right? It just changes the verb, so it just changes the time frame of the verb, right? Or it makes it a negative verb. That's all it is. It doesn't change the, the relation of, of a verb, subject, and object. So it's, it's, not, it's not like, generally speaking, a fa'al will not be ma'mul. But to, to Make it more specific. Some fa'al, like uh, the, the specific, more specifically the just fi'al mudari', can be a ma'mul when the amal is is relevant with its uh, changing its uh, positivity towards negativity and then changing the, the time frame, right? So if if we if I add lan or lam to it, it will change its case ending, right? But that case ending has nothing to do with conveying the meaning of subject or verb, right? So, as far as the, the, the study of Nahu is concerned, right, the af'ala amila, essentially, but if we consider the, the change that happened in the uh, fi'l from, from its sarf perspective, it can change its form. But, so all asma are ma'mul, except those that resemble a fi'l, all fi'l are amil exclusively, and then huruf are 
Some of them are amila, and some of them are ghayr amila, right? The ghayr amila uh, huruf, are, they're just your simple connectors. These are your simple connectors. They play no role in changing the state of other words. They just connect two words, and that's it, right? They do nothing more. And then you have amila, which serve as agents of inflection. Agents on, right? And mostly asma, mostly asma, but then as we saw in this case, afal as well, okay? Afal as well. But afal are essentially mostly amil. And then some of them, some of some of these cases, like filmudari, can be a ma'mul too, right? So if it makes more sense to you, you can also rephrase this sense a bit as that uh, all. You can replace. Uh, let me see the color for this. Let's just use green. We can say that all. All of all. Are. Amil except in fact no it film it, is, is also an Amil. Let's not get it wrong, let's not let's, let's rephrase this. All of all let's load this will be better. All of all are Amil All of all are Amil but some are amil and ma'mul at the same time. Okay? At the same time. An example would clarify this, inshallah. So let's take the example of this. If I say, Zaraba Zaydun Amran, for example, right? Now you see how Zaraba is an Amil. It ha it causes the, the word Zayd to have this Tanween on Zaydun and the word Amr to have a Fatha uh, and Tanween, right? Likewise, the word Yazribu, which is a Fail Mudari, Yazribu, also. Uh, does the same thing, okay? Exactly the same thing. It's, so in in that capacity, fail mudari or fail maldi, any type of fail is going to be an amil for these, for what follows it, okay? What follows it, right? However, the word yadribu on its own, because all the rest are, as we said, all the afal. All the of uh, all other than Firmadari are mabni. So these this, nothing not, nothing can change this. But the word lam or lan can have an effect on this verb only, without having any effect on the meaning of the uh, of the rest of the words. So these words will not be affected. These will stay the objects of inflection. From this agent of infection, yadribu, for this fail. But the word, the verb while at the same time, though it, it is it is an amil for these, can be a ma'amul at the same time because of these words. Okay? So lam and lan, they act on it to convey to change the meaning of this positive verb to a negative verb. And then lam, it specifies this verb to a past tense and lan to the future. If I say Yadribu Zaydun Amran, Zayd hits Amr. Okay? If I say Lam Yadrib Zaydun Amra, Zayd has not hit Amr. And if I say Lan Yadrib Lan Yadriba Zaydun Amran, I'm saying Zayd will, will never hit. Okay? He has not hit, he will not, he, he will never hit, and he is hitting. Okay? So this is just to convey, uh, clarify this, this middle bit over here, that a fi'l 
all afal are amila exclusively okay there is no case where a fail will not be an amil okay all of are amila always but while they are amila some of them can also be a ma'mul at the same time like we saw over here all of all are amil but some are amil and ma'mul at the same time okay that's the summary of the discussion of amal and ghair amal for fi'il and as we saw ism are all are ma'mul except those which resemble af'al and huruf are ghair amila and amila uh, as well so there's no mutual line between the two these are separate and these are separate inshallah right so let's jump in to a, a more detailed discussion on the huruf which are amila and ghair amila 